narratives and stories the powerful narratives that we tell ourselves so this week i've been reading i mean it's not a new concept i've been reading about it but it's, it's amazing how sometimes you'll read something and uh it won't really land and then you'll read it at another season in your life and you'll be like whoa this was in this book it's amazing so i wanted to talk today about narratives and the stories we tell ourselves about who we are it's really powerful because to re-examine the narrative of your life is to literally change your life so i'm gonna get a little bit personal now and talk about my own experience because i mean that's all i've got right at least that i can speak authoritatively on and even then i always question how we remember things but when I was much younger, I kind of I kind of bounced around a lot. Uh, you know, my, my dad was pilot, so we moved around quite a bit. But at some point in my life, at some juncture in my life, I, I was living with relatives. Anyone who's lived with relatives knows nine times out of ten that can be very tricky in terms of the dynamics. Anyway, without going into all the morbid details of my experience living with, say, the relatives, ugh, the light on this thing is crazy. Um, I I started to tell myself so I, I like I like to compare it to still water and sparkling water. I think you've got two kinds of people. There are people with still water and there are people with sparkling water. Sparkling water people just bubble. They can't help it. They're always lively and jumpy and and just they're, they're full of life and full of excitement. I was a sparkling water kind of person. And when I got to my relative's house, it was immediately frowned upon. Like, oh, she's just too much, and uh, she's weird. Um, and it wasn't so much what they said; it was how they treated me. And then, very quickly, I realized that asking questions and being curious about the world was seen as a problem or disrespectful. And I, this happens a lot in African families. Um, actually, I take that back. It happens a lot in any kind of race and family. It, it just could be a cult. It's not just an African thing; it's a cultural thing. And I quickly started to tell myself that there was something wrong with me that I was somehow not good enough as I was and I had to be a chameleon to change myself to suit the moment or the person in front of me. And do you know what? I realized that this narrative has followed me for 30 odd years in my life and has affected the way I do business, the way I see myself and literally is the reason that I am a people pleaser. I love to make people happy and I think that I have no value intrinsically unless I'm bringing value to someone else and that was a powerful re revelation for me and I remember thinking to myself oh my word this has been my narrative my entire life and this is the powerful thing about narratives narratives can be like 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 interior decor like after a while you walk into a room and if you walk into that room enough times you stop seeing the wallpaper it just disappears and it's just like it's just a part of the room right and this is exactly what happens with these narratives we tell us about our life after a while they become who we are we don't even think about them they're deep in our subconscious and affect every single thing we do but do you know when i thought of this and when i realized this it was so powerful for me because i started to see all the dots connecting and i started to see how that narrative and that that pain and that hurt that i had as a child and of course there were there were much worse things they would go out for like dinner and leave me at home and I would be up and cleaning in the morning and and, and, and their own kids, their actual kids would be, you know, um, doing anything else. And, you know, this kind of narrative it plays into your feeling of self-worth and your feeling of, of, of being accepted into the world. But we don't have time to really sit with that thought and interrogate that thought. We just go through life thinking, oh, this is how we are and we don't question it. So what narrative are you holding about your life that might be holding you back? Could it be that when that person left you or when that person was horrible to you, that it was something you did wrong rather than interrogate the fact that maybe there was something that they were battling with or they were fighting with at the time? How did you internalize the things that happened to you to create a narrative about your life and what you deserve, right? And this is the other thing. We tell ourselves that we don't deserve certain things on such a fundamentally deep level that we don't even, it never even rises to like, the, it never even rises to the, to the fore of, of our conscious. 
so I realized for example that for a long time I taught myself that I didn't deserve to have friends unless I had done something for these friends and usually this tended to be something financial or material can you imagine that like literally buying friendship until one of my besties like my hardcore die hard right or die friend power was like you know what Shanice you don't have to do anything for me to be a friend just because you are is enough and I realized that I had been pushing her away as a friend for a very long time and surrounding myself by the kind of people that wanted to take stuff from me whether it was just to be next to me because at that time I was on radio and TV so you know kind of you know well known I mean I'd walk into places and get free drinks and stuff like that so by being with me 